Welcome, Welcome to King Sun and Tommy, Tommy in the, the morning. morning. I'm Tommy. I'm King Sun. We're here to teach you guys about power law approximation. Yay! Alrighty, so King Sun, how about how we tell us what power law approximation is? So sometimes we're given like very hard functions, nonlinear functions that are hard to compute, and we don't know exactly how to solve them. And basically, power law approximation gives us the the a way to solve for these equations in a fashion that we can relatively compute. So, and they're usually approximated at a, an operating point. And we'll, we'll get we'll get a little bit more about that. Um, so, so what is like the form? Like I've I'm in thirty five ten right now. You know, I'm I'm not, I don't really know what's going on. So, can, can you explain to me like how how do I do this power law thing? Okay, so generally you get a function f, right? All right, all right. And um, then that function is going to equal to an alpha constant times uh, x to the g1 exponent times y to the g2 exponent. And we can approximate any function to these variables if we are given an operating point. All right. Uh, so how do I? I mean, like, I, I have my function. I, I see what I'm supposed to get, but like, how do I get this like alpha and okay. g one value? I don't really know. I see what you're getting at. So we're gonna start by approximating g one, which is equal to the partial of the function uh, divided by a partial of x evaluated at the operating point times the x over f. And since these are all you, you can compute that if you're given a general function, right? Yeah, I, I, I think I could do that. So, so, like, so what's G2 then? What do you think G2 will be? <laughs> if it has a similar format... Well, I, I would think that uh, G2 would probably be the partial of F over the partial of Y evaluated at the operating point times Y over F. There you go. Yeah, nice. All right, okay. all right. Now, if we solve for g1 and g2, we can just plug them back in. And how would you solve for alpha there? Well, if I had g1 and g2, uh, I think I would just divide it, you know. So I'd probably get something like alpha is your f of x, y function, times x to the negative g1 times y to the negative g2. There we go. Now we're ready to solve some examples. All right, examples. I'm excited about You're this. excited. Very good. So given a nonlinear function of f of x, y is equal to 2x times sine y at the operating point of 2 pi fourths. How, how are we going to do this? Well, we know the approximation, you know, based on, based on that previous page. We, okay. we know how to solve it. So I think then we should go through step by step. Like plug some numbers in, you know, get some values out. So that sounds great. So for G1, we're going to take the partial of F over the partial of X, in which case you just derive the function, hmm. and that would just give us 2 times sine of Y at the operating point. And then we multiply the X over... 2x sine y, which is the function. And now we can just cancel numbers out. And mm -hmm. so I, see, I see this This 2 cancels out with this 2, right? Okay. These x's will cancel out. And then these these signs will cancel out. So all I'm left with is 1. Excellent. Oh, sweet. Okay. Sweet. Now right. we do the same thing with g2. The only difference is that we'll be deriving based on the y. Okay, so the partial of f of x, y with respect to y is uh, 2x cosine y. Is that, is that right? That looks right. All right. At the operating at point. At the operating point, um, multiplied by y over my, x my function y. 2x. All right, and so you see these two x's will cancel out. So all we're really left with is y over tangent y. And if we plug in some numbers, that's going to give us pi fourths over tangent of pi fourths. 
So, so how do we get this pi over four? Uh, we just plugged in the original operating point, which is two is the x and the pi fourths is the y value. Okay. All right. All right. That makes sense. All right. So now I have this. So. Um, and tan of pi fourths is tan. This is one. Is one. Right? Yeah. So, all right. so we'll. And now we have solved for g one and g two. Awesome. Yes. I'm. I'm. This is. It's getting exciting. So with this, now we can go on to solving for the alpha value. All right, alpha. Well, let's see what alpha for was what? before. Yeah, so well, alpha was uh, the function f of xy uh, times x raised to the negative g1 times y to the negative g2. Okay. And we have everything else. All right. So we can just plug it in. Awesome. And we should get a number. All right. So let's, let's do that. Let's get, so we have 2x sine y, y times x. G1 was uh, 1, so to the negative first, times y to the uh, negative pi, pi over 4. So so what do we do here? Do we just Now what we do is we evaluate it at the operating oh, point. Okay, okay. Where our x value was 2 and our y value is pi fourths. And right. that should give us a numerical value in the end. Oops, my bad. First, uh, pi over four to the negative pi over four. So let's pull. Out, let's just pull out our calculator and just like crunch the numbers in. That sounds good. All right. Uh, so what did you get? I got approximately um one point seven zero nine seven as my alpha value. So now that we have calculated all all the variables, then let, we can write out the power law approximation as our function. Right. All right. Yeah. Let's do that. So f of x y can be approximated as our alpha value one point seven zero nine seven times x to the first times y to pi over four. Now we are all masters of power law approximation. All right. That was fun, man. That was fun. I'm, I'm excited. All right. Well, this has been a thirty-five ten lecture brought to you by kings and tommy in the, the morning. morning all right well enjoy the rest of your day good looking people